Hello and welcome back to our home. My name is Pastor David Birkedahl. My wife, Reverend Sally Welch, and I are co-producing these videos. Sally's focusing on production today, so I'll be doing the benediction at the end. Actually, it's the backyard of our home because I wanted to uh, focus on another uh, aspect of the uh, flora of our uh, uh, garden, and that is the vine. These vines have been here since we moved uh, into the home. They've kind of taken over some areas, and as you can see, they're uh, coming through uh, in this pomegranate tree. These are Concord grape vines, and so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the vine and the branches uh, as an important Christian metaphor. But first, I just want to say that in the uh, process of living out these days in the coronavirus uh, pandemic, uh, we've gotten to the point now where there's a lot of pressure to reopen. Most of our nation's governors have been uh, saying they're going to do a soft reopen. Some have backtracked and doing a harder uh, reopen. Some have had experienced a spike and now have been doing a, uh, uh, a softer reopen. So we're, we're probably going to be feeling our way around here for a while until we uh, move forward. I saw a si uh, meme the other day, I posted it on Facebook, uh, that uh, showed a young woman at a demonstration holding a sign that said at the beginning of every disaster movie there's a scientist who's being ignored. That's kind of where we are even though we're at the beginning of this uh, pandemic. We don't really know where we are in the longer process. We don't have the uh, distance of time to look back and say uh, yeah that, I remember that, that was earlier, that was the middle or that was late. Um, all we know is that we have a lot of voices that are clamoring for our attention. Um, we're trying to listen to the scientists and, and, and get the best advice possible for what we can do to mitigate this disaster, uh, save as many lives as possible, and sustain as much of a normal life as we can. I've been interested to see what uh, effects have been uh, felt by various industries which are hit hard, which are actually prospering during this time. And I'm sure uh, all of us are to see what the economy will hold. Where will we have a place? Or will we have a place in, in the coming economy? Uh, we have that anxiety within us, although there will be some place for us. We know that. We just may not know what it is or what it will look like yet. I have, as you can imagine, a particular interest in the churches. and. Uh, if you're a church member or a church leader, I'm sure you are too. Last week I mentioned that uh, it's been uh, projected that when churches open, it'll be a soft open, it'll be gradual. Um, old people like me are going to be asked to kind of take it easy in, in the terms of when they come back. Uh, how will that affect our churches? Maybe it'll result in a, a need to focus on younger people, which is not a, a bad thing uh, either. But it, for whoever shows up, means that there'll be social distancing, which probably means that there'll be six feet between households and maybe two or three pews or rows of chairs taped off in front of us so that we uh, have the distance all around us. But there are lots of other changes that could come forward. I've seen a couple of articles, uh, you may have seen them too, about um, changes that are taking place today. Oh, by the way, Happy Star Wars Day. It's May the 4th, yes. May the 4th be with you. Uh, Star Wars, uh, you probably know, is, is one of the things that I have uh, enjoyed following over the years, as well as Star Trek and other science fiction. But Star Wars particular has, in particular has a, a place in my heart because the first Star Wars came out in 1977, the same week that I was ordained. And all the younger generation of my family uh, found some time to go and watch the movie at the Strand Theater in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. I don't think it's even there now, but uh, that, that was a very uh, fond memory of mine, the movie and being together with, uh, with my family, the, the, the folks now uh, becoming adults, the young people of our generation. That may be the future of the church. It always has been, the present and the future. Uh, as we focus and, and, and prepare a church that will one day return to normal. But meantime, even for them, uh, for all of us, there's going to be some adjustments. Today is the day that the effects uh, for church reopening are taking place in Nebraska. Here's uh, what, uh, what they are requiring. 
Stay home if you are sick or have underlying conditions. Seat by household and each household must remain six feet apart. Sanitize all surfaces between services. Some pews must be taped off. No hymnals or Bibles to share. That was a surprising one to me. I hadn't thought of that. All those hymnals and Bibles may have to come out uh, so that people aren't, uh, they're too hard to clean. Uh, so they may uh, be taken out to, in order to avoid transmission of the virus. No passing of an offering plate. Places of worship are encouraged to add additional service times. Well, yeah, if you got all the social distancing, the good news is that our churches will be full again, but we may have to add lots of more services. Places of worship are encouraged to maintain video streaming options. Well, we, we're learning on, on that count, and so uh, by the time this happens, we may be pretty good at it. Communion is allowed, but there will be no common cups, which surprises me as there is an active debate on which method of distribution of communion is the most sanitary. Each pew will be released row by row at the end of the service. That helps maintain social distancing. Weddings and funerals will also be allowed by the same guidelines, but receptions must stick to the 10 person minimum. Well, that'll certainly throw a wrench into the uh, uh, life of the party. Now, another article I read was uh, one about restrictions in Germany. And uh, they mentioned a lot of the same things as you can imagine, but here's a, here's a shocker uh, that uh, came from that article. A draft of, of the requirements bans communal singing and wind instruments from services over a concern for amplified precipitation of potentially infectious drops. Uh, maybe that, that's, uh, maybe how, that's how the virus spreads enough so that singing and blowing through a wind instrument uh, will be uh, prohibited at least at, at first until we get uh, treatment or most likely until we get a vaccine. We'll have to see. We don't know what, what's going to come. But what we know is that it will be different. We know that uh, many things will uh, change about our life together, but that also many things will remain the same. We, we know that things will change. Even if it wasn't for the coronavirus, we know that things are always changing. Uh, we know that one of the things that we can count on is new challenges we hadn't anticipated before like no hymn books or Bibles or no singing in the church or the sudden emergence of the threat of a killer hornet. Who, who saw that coming? That, that, that's a challenge that, that the, the world will need to come to grips with at the same time as we're dealing with the coronavirus. But we also know that one thing that will remain the change is that God abides with us. The metaphor of the vine and the branches is a common one in the Bible. In the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, Jews call the Hebrew, their Bible, we sometimes call the Hebrew Bible. The vine is the um, uh, nation of Israel, and God is the vine dresser, the planter and the dresser. In, in the New Testament, Jesus becomes the vine as the Messiah. God is the planter of the seed. God nourishes the roots, the roots uh, uh, service the, nourish the vine. The vine comes uh, to maturity and it bears fruit in grapes. We are the branches of that vine. The Holy Spirit is, is like the wind, the, the sun, the, the rain, all of these things that strengthen and nourish the plants as they're growing. But the connection is through God in Jesus Christ. All one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, vine, branches, fruit, everything around us, we are, I'm sorry, not the fruit, we are the fruit. We are the consequence. And in the same way, our life is lived so that as long as we remain connected to the vine, we will bear fruit. It's a consequence of being connected. If, if we're not bearing fruit, it means we're no longer connected to the vine. But that vine is never going to disconnect itself. God will never abandon us. God instead promises to abide with us, to provide the nourishment, the sun, the rain, the wind, everything we need to be strong, to, to nourish us through the word and the sacraments. Martin Luther once said, for the true church to exist and for worship to, to happen, there are only two things that are needed, that the word be rightly preached and taught and that the sacraments be rightly administered. This is where we 
come to a relationship with God. We open our heart to receive God's gift of faith, and we are given the, the grace through, through God's presence in concrete forms to know that we have been bought, purchased with a price at the cross, and that we continue to be sustained by a loving and gracious God. Here's where Jesus uh, lays this out for us in, uh, in uh, Scripture. He's talking to his disciples and using this metaphor in John 15, uh, beginning at the first verse. I am the true vine, Jesus says, and the Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. No connection to Jesus, no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. We are organically connected to Jesus Christ, the vine. And when we are connected, it, it's a consequence. It, it's not even something we have to think about. It, we are tempted not to, but the consequence of a natural organic connection to the vine is that we bear fruit, good fruit. And what is that fruit? It's lives that are wholly dedicated to the love of God and the love and service of our neighbor. The fruit of the Spirit, Paul writes in his, fifth, uh, in his letter to the Galatians in the fifth chapter. He says, by contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. This is the, who we are. It, it's who we are because of whose we are, because we are connected to the vine. We are the branches of that vine, and if we are connected to the vine that is the life-giving, nourishing presence of Jesus Christ, we will bear the fruit of the Spirit. We will have in our lives the evidence of God's presence within us. That's the connection that remains the same. That what is what connects us even when we are in isolation, even when we seem apart. We are made one in the one body of Christ. The Christ as the head, we as the individual parts of it. The people of God called to serve as we have been served, sent into the world to give evidence with the good fruit that comes as a consequence of living whose we are. Now, each uh, week we pray together. We uh, have had some prayers requested. Um, we will honor those requests. Uh, you can send them to the email address connected with this video, uh, and we will uh, take note of them and include them. But the most important thing is that we pray. The Lord's Prayer was given because Jesus' disciples uh, were upset that John the Baptist's disciples had been taught how to pray. They went to him and said, when are you going to teach us how to pray? And Jesus didn't teach them how to pray. He just said, when you pray, pray like this. And he gave a template in the Lord's Prayer. We'll include that in our prayer today. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for your abiding love for us, for the love that will not let us go, for the love that is consistent with us from generation to generation, from experience to experience. We pray during these times, especially for people living alone and people living with families, for people with children who are now their teachers, providers, comforters, entertainment directors, cooks, cleaners, maintenance persons, and everything else. We pray for the homeless and the most vulnerable among us. We pray for those who are struggling with mental health or with substance abuse. We pray for people who are afraid, who worry about their jobs, their income, their security, and their health and for those struggling with domestic violence and family strength, stress. We pray for doctors, nurses, paramedics, and emergency medical technicians, hospital workers, and those who support them. We pray for teachers and students who have lost livelihood and connections, meaningful work and education. We pray for food service professionals 
for those who transport and deliver things, for mechanics and mail carriers, and all workers in essential services. We pray for pastors, musicians, administrators, secretaries, leaders, and members who continue to serve their churches and long for real community. We pray for one's grandson for healing from several cancers and for peace and your continued presence. We pray for one's mother for healing of cancer and for her extended family for peace in your presence and your promise. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we pray for in the words of the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Finally, we'd just like to remind you to stay hydrated, to remember that, that we who are nourished by many things are filled with the living water that is God, God's presence within us, to allow that God to nourish and hydrate us every day to remember your church. If you don't have one, find one. Be connected to it. Find out how you can contribute. To pray for your pastor and your church leaders as they seek wisdom and discernment moving forward during these times. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide or mental illness, talk to somebody. You don't have to carry those burdens alone. There are hotlines. There are people you know who love you and care for you. Call somebody and talk to them about what you are feeling. Be kind to everyone. Everyone is struggling in some way during this disruption in our lives. A, a disruption of historic proportions. There are many ways we deal with this. Many have, have considered uh, making journals a wonderful idea because someday your grandchildren, great-grandchildren are gonna ask, what did great or great-great or great-great-great grandma and grandpa do during the coronavirus pandemic of 2019, and you'll have a written record that will provide a history for them from your family. We want to finally thank you for spending this time with us. We invite you to check out the welcome and introduction uh, video on our YouTube channel, Streams of Living Water. Uh, for more information about how to contact us and, and suggest improvements, click on the Show More button to get more information or look above the, the Facebook uh, video for that info. Remember to hit the red subscribe button on the YouTube channel and the follow button if you're on the Facebook page. Like and share these videos uh, if, 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 you, if you care to, and we encourage you to spread uh, the information that we provide. And now let's close with the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. for a walk.